Donating your spirit processing power is one of the coolest things you can do today to help aid in the fight against the coronavirus. I'm Jake Garcia with Modus Create, and today we're going to walk through installing Rosetta at Home for Windows. First, I'll show you how to download and install Rosetta at Home onto your computer. Next, we'll walk through some of the common configuration settings so that you can learn to control how and when your donations occur. Let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll open up a browser. Here I'm going to use Firefox for demonstration purposes. You can choose to use Chrome or Internet Exploder. Either will work. To begin downloading the client, we'll need to go to the Rosetta at Home project page. So in the address bar, we'll type in boinc.bakerlab.org. From there, we're going to go ahead and press the orange Join Rosetta at Home link. And then next, the green Download button. Now you're presented with two options. The first of which has the client, but also includes VirtualBox. If you're new to this, VirtualBox is a virtualization software, and I don't recommend this. Even though it is recommended, I typically say for people who are new to the project, I would stick with the native binary. So I'm going to go ahead and press the blue download link. Now I'm going to go ahead and confirm the save. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up the downloaded binary installer. Windows is going to ask me to confirm, so I'm going to say yes. Next, you'll see the installer begin its work. All right, walking through the install process is pretty straightforward. It's just a few clicks. We're going to press next. We're going to accept the license agreement. Next, next again, and then go ahead and press install. This install process could take a few moments. And once it's done, you're going to be prompted with an installation complete dialog. Pressing finish at this point is going to automatically launch the BOINC client, and that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and press finish and move forward. Now once the client launches, you're going to be prompted to choose a project. And in this VM, for some reason, it's not showing all the projects that are possible. So I'm going to have to manually type it in. So I'll type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash boinc.bakerlab.org forward slash Rosetta. I know it's a lot, it doesn't take that long. And if you typed it incorrectly, you can go ahead and press next. Now, once the client has communicated successfully with the project, it's gonna prompt you for the creation of a new user account. Creating a new user account is important if you wanna be able to track the work units that your computer has completed. It also is very important if you have multiple computers that you want to track work units for. Now, I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and press yes for existing user and type in my credentials. I'm going to go ahead and press next. And we'll get the final confirmation that the project's been added, so we're going to press finish. You're going to start seeing some status indicators in the BOINC client. This is a really good view. It's very simplistic. I'm not a fan of this view, to be honest. I like the advanced view, so we're gonna look at that. I'm gonna press view, and then advanced view. The advanced view will give you a lot more information, and I find this most useful. So right off the bat, we see that there are a few tabs. Notices is simply the notifications that you're gonna get from the project. In this example, you'll see they added the Linux ARM platform to the project. Under the projects tab, you'll see the projects that you attach your client to. So we've only attached Rosetta at home to this client, and that's okay. Once we press the project, we can see that the buttons on the left have illuminated. Now from here, you can suspend the project, and to actually see the status, we'll have to widen the window. And if we hover over, you'll see that it's suspended by user. I'm gonna go ahead and press resume. Next, we're gonna take a look at how we can control when Rosetta at home is actually processing. So for that, we'll go to Options, and then Computing Preferences. So the Computing Preferences pane can be somewhat intimidating. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the right. But I want you not to be intimidated by it. So out of the box, Rosetta at Home will use 100% of your available CPU cores and 100% of their available CPU time, but only, only, if you have not used your computer in the last three minutes and your actual processes, your browsers, your word processors and so forth, are not using above 25% of the CPU workload. And for the most part, this is really good for everybody. 
However, if you want to make sure that you, let's say, defer processing, at that point, you're going to want to go to daily schedules. From here, you can configure Rosetta to only compute between certain work times. So for me, let's say if I ended my day at 6 p.m. using the 24 hour clock cycle, I'll type in 18. Let's say if I start my day at 8 a.m., I'll type in 8 here. Rosetta at home will only compute between the hours of 6 p.m. to 8 a.m., thus allowing me to use my computer for the most part during the workday, and I can use all of my available computing power to help scientists fight diseases. You can even have much finer grain control to say, well, I just don't want to do hours. I actually want to specify by day so I can give it all of 24 hours during the Saturday and Sunday times, then perhaps do 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. during the weekdays. I definitely would suggest spending some time with this so that you can tailor it to your work schedule. But for now, I'll go ahead and press cancel. The one cool thing about this project is you can look at the output from a graphics perspective. So to do that, select a task and then go ahead and press show graphics. Now that's going to pop up a window and depending on your computer, it might take a while to actually render some information. And it may seem frozen, but it is actually working. And after time, you'll start to see it moving a lot faster. And there you have it. I have Rosetta at home installed and it's working with scientists to help fight against COVID-19. We can minimize this window and get back to work. If you felt that this video is useful, I kindly ask that you subscribe to our channel or share this video with your friends. Thank you and be well.